The oxygen generator and liquefier, or OGL, is a portable liquid oxygen system capable of generating 93% USP oxygen and converting it into liquid oxygen at approximately one liter per hour. The OGL can store up to 40 liters of liquid oxygen in its onboard storage tank, which can be transferred into portable LOX devices, such as those in the Essex Battlefield Oxygen Sustainment System, or BOSS. The OGL is available in olive green or desert tan. The following information provides a general overview of the equipment and covers the inspection, modes of operation, maintenance, and storage or shipment of the OGL. First, it is important to review some points regarding lock safety. Never allow liquid oxygen to contact skin. Always wear appropriate personal protective equipment when handling locks or lock systems. Keep personal protective equipment and any tools free from oil, grease, or any hydrocarbon and designated for oxygen use only. Be sure to keep locks clear of ignition sources and contaminants. Only use liquid oxygen in a well-ventilated area. And remember, never transfer locks on asphalt or a tile floor. For more details on locks precautions, handling, hazards, and properties refer to your specified document, technical order, or equivalent. The OGL is secured in a wooden shipping crate that is equipped with two shock impact and two tilt tip indicators. Upon receipt, inspect these four indicators. If the tilt tip indicator arrow is blue, it means the system has been on its side or tipped over in transit. If the shock impact indicator is red, the system has been subjected to rough handling. If you observe either of these situations, make note on the bill of lading. Any claim will require this documentation. Next, remove the OGL from the shipping container and thoroughly inspect the system for possible damage or contamination that may have occurred during shipment. The wooden shipping crate should be retained for storing or transporting the system. While in service, the OGL should be inspected at least once a month. During the inspection, be sure to check for missing components, severe dents, or any other visible damage. Before using the OGL, you should become familiar with the components of the unit. Looking at the front of the OGL, you will see control panel, panel filter, and a compartment that contains transfer hose, oxygen gas port, filler valve, grounding connection, and power cord. The right side of the unit has an intake air filter and a louvered panel filter. Located on the back of the OGL are the following. The air water filter access panel, filter indicator sight glass, NEMA power connection, electrical disconnect switch, panel filter, and the water drain port. On the left side of the unit, you will find the electrical access panel. The OGL has integrated removable stainless steel forklift tubes on the bottom of the system and four retractable caster wheels sturdy enough to allow the system to handle rough, outside terrain. Each of the caster wheels has a wheel brake and swivel lock. In addition, the OGL has eight D-rings which allow the system to be strapped down if required. The OGL has one control panel that allows interface between the user and all operations of the system. The control panel includes the system fault indicators, emergency stop button, hour meter, mode selector switch, locks quantity gauge, doer pressure gauge, and the start button. The OGL is designed to operate on 240 volt AC, 60 hertz, single phase power with a minimum 30 amp circuit. The system has a commercial NEMA L6-30 for the main power connection and comes standard with a 20 foot NEMA L1430P power cord. Contact Essex if a different power cord configuration is needed. The OGL has four basic modes of operation. Make locks, standby, 
transfill, O2 gas, and off. For the OGL to operate effectively in any of these modes, it must be oriented within five degrees of being level. A six foot clearance should be maintained around the unit. The OGL is designed for indoor use, but can be used outdoors to protect it from weather and heat by a roof or a shelter. To make locks, make sure power is connected to the OGL and the emergency stop light on the control panel is illuminated. Turn the mode selector switch on the control panel to make locks standby. Press and release the green push to start button. If the system is starting from an empty state, no locks, it will take two to three hours for locks to start accumulating in the doer. The OGL will produce approximately one liter of liquid oxygen per hour. Allow at least 40 hours to completely fill the doer. The OGL will produce less than one liter per hour at temperatures above 70 degrees Fahrenheit or at altitudes above sea level. When operating the system at temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the unit will need to warm up for as much as an hour prior to making locks. When the doer reaches capacity, the system will go into standby mode to maintain the volume of liquid oxygen. The system will stay in standby mode until the pressure in the doer rises to approximately 35 PSIG. The system will then revert to make locks mode to reliquify the gas before it vents. Once the pressure in the doer decreases to approximately 10 PSIG, the system will switch back into standby mode. The system will continue cycling between make locks and standby modes to maintain zero loss of locks from the doer. While in the standby mode, the system operates for 15 to 20 minutes every two to three hours. In the transfill mode, the OGL is capable of transferring locks into storage devices and portable systems such as the BMOS, MMOS, BMOS filling station, PT locks, and NPT locks. The liquid oxygen transfer hose supplied with the unit has a Crew 59E female filler valve capable of mating with a Crew 50A fill valves. To transfer liquid oxygen, check to make sure power is connected to the OGL and the emergency stop light in the control panel is illuminated. Remove the liquid oxygen transfer hose from the clips. Also remove the cap on the filler valve. Inspect the filler and mating valves to be sure they are free of debris grease, and moisture. Clean with a lint-free cloth if necessary. Connect the liquid oxygen transfer hose to the locks vessel to be filled. Turn the mode selector switch on the control panel to transfill. Press and release the green push to start button. When locks transfer is complete and the secondary item is full, remove the liquid oxygen transfer hose and let the filler valve defrost before replacing the protective cap. Turn the mode selector switch on the control panel to make locks standby. Press the green push to start button to restart the system. It is important to note that some locks is lost during the transfer of liquid oxygen. Typically, 25 liters would be required to fill a 20 liter device. In O2 gas mode, the OGL is capable of supplying gaseous oxygen at up to 11 liters per minute and 7 to 10 PSIG. Make sure power is connected to the OGL and the emergency stoplight and the control panel is illuminated. Turn the mode selector switch on the control panel to O2 gas. Press and release the green push to start button. The system will take approximately 5 minutes to begin producing oxygen gas. The oxygen gas port can be connected to a high pressure booster pump or cylinder filling station to fill high pressure cylinders. Essex offers a high pressure fill kit for use with the OGL. The 
kit requires the use of a Rix High Pressure Micro Boost Oxygen Compressor, which is not included. To fill a high pressure cylinder using the kit and Rix compressor, remove the low pressure hose assembly and the high pressure hose assembly from the storage case. Attach the quarter inch connection on the low pressure hose to the low pressure port on the Rix compressor with Teflon tape. Attach the quarter inch connection on the high pressure hose to the high pressure port on the Rix compressor with Teflon tape. Attach the DISS 1240 end of the low pressure hose to the DISS 1240 gas outlet port on the OGL. Make sure the manual vent valve is closed on the high pressure hose assembly. Attach the yoke connection from the high pressure hose to the stem of the high pressure bottle. Plug in the Rix compressor. Make sure the pressure is relieved on the Rix Microboost Compressor High Pressure Outlet side. Flip the rocker switch on the Rix compressor to the on position. Push the start button on the compressor. Periodically monitor the Rix compressor for leaks or unusual noises. When the system is in off mode, any liquid in the door will be lost over time. A full door will be empty within 8 to 10 days if left in the off mode. All locks should be drained from the OGL when performing maintenance and prior to storage or shipment. To drain the OGL, check to make sure power is connected to the OGL and the emergency stop light in the control panel is illuminated. Remove the liquid oxygen transfer hose from the clips. Also remove the cap on the filler valve. Inspect the filler and mating valves to be sure they are free of debris, grease, and moisture. Clean with a lint-free cloth if necessary. Connect the drain fitting into the filler valve on the oxygen transfer hose. Place the end of the liquid oxygen transfer hose into a clean stainless steel container with a capacity greater than 40 liters. You can also drain the OGL by filling other locks equipment, such as two BMOS filling stations. Turn the mode selector switch on the control panel to transfill. Press and release the green push to start button. Continue the drain process until the quantity gauge shows empty and the pressure gauge reads zero PSIG. When all the locks has been drained from the OGL, remove the end of the liquid oxygen transfer hose from the stainless steel drain container to allow the hose end to defrost. Once the liquid oxygen transfer hose end has defrosted, Disconnect the drain fitting from the filler valve. Replace the protective cap on the filler valve and reinstall the liquid oxygen transfer hose and drain fitting into the transfer hose compartment. Turn the mode selector switch on the control panel to off. Turn the electrical disconnect switch on the back of the OGL to off. Then unplug the system from the power source. Before performing any maintenance on the OGL, make sure the power is turned off and the power cord is disconnected from the system. To inspect, clean and or replace the intake air filter. Remove and retain the wing nut and nylon washer on the filter cover and pull the filter housing off. Inspect the filter element and clean as required with mild detergent and water. Do not use high pressure spray to clean the filter element. Dry completely before reassembling. The intake air filter should be checked monthly, more frequently if used in extreme environments. To inspect, clean and or replace the air water filter. Look upward through the sight glass on the back of the OGL to see the air water filter indicator. If the indicator is green, the filter is still good. If the indicator is red, the filter should be changed. Remove the access panel by taking out the four Phillips head screws. Push the button on the filter housing flange and turn to remove the metal guard. Slide the plastic bowl down and unscrew the filter. Replace the filter and clean the plastic bowl with water and a soft cloth. Slide the plastic bowl back on and twist the metal collar onto the housing. It will click in place when installed properly. Reinstall the access panel with the four Phillips screws. 
The air water filter indicator should be checked every three months, more frequently if used in extreme environments. The panel filters are located behind the louvered panels on the front, back, and right side of the OGL. To inspect, clean, and or replace the panel filters. Detach the louvered panel by taking out the Phillips screws that hold it in place. Remove the panel filter by taking out the Phillips screws that hold it in place. Clean as required with mild detergent and water. Do not use high pressure spray to clean the panel filters. Dry completely before reassembling. Arrows are located on the side of the filter frame which indicates the flow direction. The filter should be installed so flow is front to rear of the OGL. The panel filter should be checked monthly, more frequently if used in extreme environments. To prepare the OGL for storage or shipment, drain the unit as previously shown. Turn the mode selector switch on the control panel to off. Turn the electrical disconnect switch to off. Verify that the power indicator on the control panel is not illuminated. Disconnect the power cord from the system and return it to the storage compartment. Make sure all caps are in place on the ports. Retract the caster wheels into the stowed position. For storage, install the OGL into the shipping crate and secure with the original screws and new steel banding. The unit can also be stored in an environmentally controlled area. For shipment, install the OGL into the shipping crate and secure the crate with new screws and new steel banding. Secure the crate with tie-down straps to a pallet, aircraft or vehicle for transport. The Essex OGL has FDA 510K clearance, number K131990, which covers the use of the product in military and commercial applications to produce and transfer liquid oxygen into portable systems. These systems provides the solution to medical liquid oxygen logistics problems experienced in field hospitals or remote locations. 